What's up everybody, this is Master Ian Gamer, hot on the tails of one of the most optimistic dev updates we've had in recent times for Overwatch 2. A pretty scathing Bloomberg article just released, authored by the renowned gaming journalist Jason Schreier, giving an in-depth look into not only the true fate of Overwatch 2 PvE going forward, but also the overall financial state of Overwatch as a franchise, and how it's even impacting the developers who've been working on it. So going ahead and jumping right on in to this article. I won't be reading it in its entirety, but I will be focusing specifically on the components of this article, which I think are the most important, starting off with insight into the financial state of Overwatch as a franchise. This week, video game titan Blizzard Entertainment changed the business model for the shooter Overwatch 2, decoupling the game's heroes from the paid battle pass. This seemingly drastic move led players and observers to ask, is Overwatch 2 a failure? Well, here's some news that might offer some insight. Twice a year, employees at Blizzard receive bonus checks based on the financial success of their products. Each employee is given a target number and informed that they will receive a percentage contingent upon the company hitting its profit goals for the year. These profit-sharing bonuses are an important part of Blizzard's compensation packages. For decades, prospective employees have been told that while the company does not pay base salaries as high as nearby competitors, such as Riot Games, games, they make up for it through profit sharing from lucrative hits like World of Warcraft. Bonuses at Blizzard usually arrive in two chunks, one in August for the first half of the year and one in March for the second half of the previous year. However, in August 2023, Overwatch 2 team members were told that based on the game's poor financial performance in the first half of the year, they shouldn't have received anything. According to people familiar with what happened who asked not to be named, discussing non-public information, but that the company would cover some of their bonuses to make up for the shortfall. Then, earlier this year, the company informed developers that they would receive a stunning 0% of their bonus targets. Failing to get any profit-sharing bonus is rare at Blizzard, and is the result of a major policy change that was enacted in 2023. Previously, employees would receive bonuses based on the overall performance of the company, but last summer the payouts became tied to the performance of each specific franchise. Since their titles were more successful in 2023, teams on games such as Diablo and World of Warcraft received bonuses this month, but the Overwatch developers weren't so lucky. Now, for the next few paragraphs, it basically goes into to how there was a long-fought battle between former Blizzard presidents Mike Morheim and J. Allen Brack, who wanted to make it a company-wide share of the revenue as opposed to a franchise-specific share of the revenue, which former chief executive Bobby Kotick was pushing for. But the most important thing I think to delve into here is, first and foremost, how unfortunate it is that Overwatch developers are seemingly taking significant financial impacts here due to the poor performance of Overwatch 2, but also simply the fact that Overwatch 2 apparently isn't performing very well financially. The fact that it's evidently so rare for employees to not receive any sort of financial bonus as the result of the franchises and games they're working on definitely shines a light, I think, on how poorly Overwatch 2 has been performing following its launch in 2022. The game itself made so little money that the developers received zero dollars in bonuses for its success. Wow. I mean, I think there's a lot of speculation about Overwatch 2 not doing great, but for me personally, I never imagined it was doing that poorly. Now, keep in mind, there may be other shenanigans going on here internally. Maybe the company sort of shifted around the percentages that people would actually earn through the success of a game. So perhaps that was also a factor in terms of why developers didn't receive any additional revenue due to the game's success or lack thereof. But dang, 0% revenue based off of how poorly Overwatch 2 is performing. That is brutal. Moving on though, the lack of payout reflects the precarious position of the Overwatch 2 sequel, which came out in 2022 to mixed reviews. Overwatch 2 was the follow-up to one of the most successful games of all time, and although it was originally pitched with a focus on PvE, it has since scaled back that vision. While its predecessor was sold as a boxed product, Overwatch 2 is free to play, which led to business challenges as Blizzard tried to figure out how to convince players to spend money on character outfits and other perks. An example of one of these is, of course, the paid heroes, where you would have to purchase the battle pass in order to actually gain access to that new hero who released. And I personally now am suspecting that the reason maybe Blizzard has stopped doing that is less because they think it's more financially lucrative to do it one way versus another, but because they're just desperate for players. 
I don't know, just speculation there. I, uh, it seems like things aren't great, according to this article. Last year, Overwatch 2 received a paid pack of three PvE story missions that sold poorly, according to people familiar with the business, which was a major reason for the cratering bonuses. In January, as part of a company-wide reduction in its workforce, the majority of the team behind Overwatch 2's PvE was laid off. Overwatch 2 developers were informed that the company does not plan to finish any of the remaining planned PvE content and will instead double down on competitive player versus player gameplay, according to the people familiar. Who? there we have it. There we have it, folks. In the article I covered earlier this week, a lot of ex-developers were talking about how they suspected Overwatch 2 PvE was dead following the poor performance of Invasion, but now you have it clear, cut, plain and simple, it's done. There is no more PvE, at least according to what's being discussed in this article here. And again, this is by Jason Schreier, a pretty reputable games journalist, so I think there's some solid credibility here behind this statement that Overwatch 2 PvE is not getting any more updates. Again, it's not surprising. I've been saying this myself for months at this point, but to have it written in this context right there, dang, it's uh, it's pretty rough to hear. In a statement, Blizzard spokesman Andrew Reynolds said that last year the company began focusing on the foundational team-based experience, building the game alongside our players, and more quickly addressing their feedback. Decisions like these are in service of our community and based on feedback, which is also good for our business and the future of the game, he said, adding that the game is on track to reach 100 million lifetime players and that they are exploring new experiences, big and small, which will push the frontiers of the Overwatch universe. Despite the game's shaky performance so far, there is optimism among some members of the Overwatch team that this refocus on PvP will lead to a turnaround, although Blizzard will need to ensure that the missing bonuses and low morale don't drive away key staff before then. I think it's a little late for Blizzard to be worried about driving away key staff. How many of the OG Overwatch developers are even still on the team at this point? Basically, just Aaron Keller. All the other major names who were there from the beginning are gone. So yeah, a rather scathing look here into Blizzard once again. It's it's a bit of a shame after that amazing dev update we had earlier this week talking about the exciting things coming in Season 10 and the great changes for the game it sounds like are going to be coming in the near future. Having this look into the actual company itself, hearing that the devs aren't even getting paid in all these instances due to the game's overall poor financial performance and the statement that the PvE is outright dead at this point and will not be getting any further development. Yeah, it sucks to hear, but at the same time, this might be the right direction for Blizzard to go. Not the lack of bonus payments for the devs, of course, but the PvE being scrapped. This is something I have talked about a number of times before, but clearly the PvE wasn't working. We saw that in the invasion missions which launched. We saw that it just wasn't a good game mode. It didn't have the sort of engaging gameplay experience that we would want from something like that. And so refocusing squarely on the PvP and just pushing PvE to the side, relegating it to be maybe just an occasional event game mode like what we got with Cosmic Crisis in Season 9, that's probably the way to go. Blizzard needs to focus on what was actually working for Overwatch 1 back in the early days, because if they don't, well, the Overwatch franchise might not have much of a future. That's just my thoughts on it though. I would love to hear your thoughts on all this in the comments down below. Are you disappointed to hear that Overwatch 2 PvE has finally, at long last, officially fully been cancelled? Or maybe you're feeling a little optimistic about this future. Maybe you think the refocus on PvP is exactly what the game needs and that things will only be getting better from here. Either way, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And as always, be sure to subscribe, hit up that bell icon, come follow me on X and join my Discord server to hang out and never miss any of my future Overwatch 2 news, streams, and other content. Special thanks to my YouTube channel members who help make these videos possible. If you'd like to join them to earn some cool rewards, then just hit that join button down below. Otherwise, this is Master Ian Gamer signing off. And until next time, have a great day.